Hello all, Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy here. And today, well, if there's one thing I enjoy, it's bonsai tree videos. I'm always watching bonsai tree videos in my spare time. And to some degree, I, I like my nerd stuff too. Uh, but uh, to that end, I thought I would go ahead and do maybe a little catch up. Look at what we've done in the past, in the past year in regards to, uh, to our projects and what is it we're doing here? For instance, in this past year, uh, we changed, we started off with some fluorescent lights that we then changed to LED modified fluorescent lights, which we then changed to new LED fixtures. And then it was about the time that we decided to also build a rack. And the first rack uh, I tried to build was a prototype I made out of PVC that I later tried to reinforce with aluminum angle iron. Uh, ultimately, that would become uh, this galvanized setup here and the 750 watt LEDs would replace the four foot uh, LEDs. So the four foot four shot fluorescent type LEDs. So that was what we did as far as that's concerned. Uh, we have also uh, this year, in this past year, um, built this shelf, which takes our trees off of the uh, off of the handrail offered by the apartment, and then we uh, put reinforcement jacks, leveling jacks, underneath them, and then we lined it in copper and made a drainage hole and set up a drainage bin. So uh, that's what's going on. Oh, and we then set up a table to increase our uh, our show hen grow area and uh, just our grow area overall. So as far as projects are concerned, that's kind of kind of a look. Uh, in this past year, I. Uh, Frida, I got Frida, and she and I drove uh, Lyft during part of the pandemic, and it was during uh, that part of the pandemic that I was, uh, I stepped up my shooting. I had been doing a video about once a month, and uh, about the time that I started bonsai, I, um, my first bonsai tree was this wisteria a little over a year ago. And it was shortly after that I went to uh, the internet and ordered one online. Actually, I ordered two. I ordered some tools and this Dawn Redwood, which as you can see, is starting to uh, bud out uh, up one side and down the other we're getting new shoots all along where the where the old uh, bark is rolled over I'm getting new shoots up here and new all up in there so i ordered some bonsai tools this tree and some bonsai tools to torture it with and then set out to do that it was later on in that same uh that same year following summer that i um found this tree and uh, I found it locally and purchased it. So uh, that was off to the races. The idea was, was to see if we could start and or have some nice bonsai trees uh, if we lived in an apartment and didn't have a backyard to grow them in. If instead of a bonsai garden, we had, for instance, a balcony uh we are lucky when i first started doing this i just took the balcony that i had and um 
started trying to lay out where I wanted the trees sit and how many trees I could have. And they weren't always trees. They were just going to be plants at some point. Um, and this was going to be my little decorated oasis where I could sit here on one of the day beds that you see in the living room and just look at the stars right there. At night, the stars right there are beautiful. So that was kind of the overall idea. And I think the first time I showed my balcony with a couple of bonsai trees on the shelf to a bonsai club, they said, yeah, you need to get rid of all that stuff and get more bonsai trees. And I thought, gad. And I'll be darned if it wasn't too much later. Uh, all of that neat little bedding accoutrement and all that other stuff had to make its way in here so that we could have more bonsai trees. So it's funny how things work out. Uh, it wasn't too long after that that I uh, decided that I would get larger uh, bonsai projects when I first started. So this was probably um, the end of my second year, uh, which would have been like um, last year. Yeah, last year. Uh, August before last, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So uh, that's, uh, I've had these guys going that far about a year and I did that uh, chop in the center of the, of the bigger one in the center. The bigger one in the center was grown locally by a bonsai enthusiast in San Francisco. He had had it for a couple of years as his project. And I think I had seen in a picture where it was originally about this high. I don't know what happened to his styling ideas. When I, uh, when I got the tree, it only had a couple of limbs on it. And I've since back, cut it back a little bit and started my own plant. But uh, the one to the right and the one to the left were uh, all obtained in um, northern Louisiana and uh, I had them shipped from there. They were three or four hundred dollars as I recall uh, to the door I believe. Maybe a little bit more than that was shipping but it was around that. Um, so yeah those all three of those trees originally came from Louisiana but uh, this one the center one had been here in California for a couple of years before the other two. And uh, rather than uh, have all those trees, plus that pot, which I uh, ordered from Brussels out of, I mean, not Brussels, Weingerts out of Florida, uh, rather than have all that stuff hanging out in separate pots and taking up space that I didn't really feel like I had, plus I'm just really impatient. That's, that's what I need to work on is patience. Um, I decided to slip pot all three of those trees uh, in, in uh, late summer. So I did, and they were fine with that. They, uh, they didn't drop a leaf at the time, uh, but then when winter comes and they do drop all their leaves, you're sitting there thinking about what you've done, and this is a really rather pricey little project to start. Uh, that tub is full of akadama. The top has got some dressing on it, but below that is just pure Akadama. Um, so then when the following spring came along and they all flushed out, I did kind of feel a little relieved. These are going to be three formal uprights. I uh, was thinking about it the other day. I seem to have, uh, I seem to kind of like formal uprights maybe. Not really, but I do seem to have a couple of projects that are uh, a little straight. Uh, I do want these to be straight. The only wire I was laughing last year, the only wire I put on this and on my uh, Dawn Redwood was uh, to straighten a branch that was trying to grow crooked, which is kind of funny, but I definitely like shapes. I think my cork bark could use a little bit more shape, but um, I'm definitely liking the shape of my Ponderosa. It's got kind of swanky moves in all the right places. Um, so yeah, that's what we have so far. That kind of covers what we've picked up on the way of uh, projects. The theme of, uh, and the basic idea behind my making videos from the very start was that I don't know everything, but uh, I tend to like to start in a, in a, a rather big way. Um, it's kind of my MO. 
So I knew that in no time at all, I would probably be uh, head over heels enough to uh, be wanting to do something that was fairly, what I consider to be a fairly big undertaking. I consider those three cypress trees to be a fairly big, uh, let's see what happens, you know. Um, I hadn't been in bonsai that long when, um, when I started trying to direct the parts and pieces to my front door to make that happen. And I'm really happy with it so far. I'm really excited with, uh, I've learned enough now to where I can see exactly what I wanna do with some of the growth that's been offered me. And these trees do offer a lot of growth. In the time that I've been doing this in the last couple of years, I've found that uh, I have a mixture. I have a mixture of trees that are very, very accommodating and are very easy to grow and an immature uh, in the right grow as long as they're not growing them in the wrong environment. Uh, would probably find uh, oak trees or cypress trees. Very, very easy to grow. Uh, I would say black pines. I need to watch. You need to watch your P's and Q's a little more. Uh, the same with with maples. Maples are pretty easy to grow also, but when it comes to doing them right, there's there's uh, a lot of little rules to making sure that they're directing their energy in a way that's beneficial to the tree. And uh, so this little collection of mine is a mixture of things that um, will allow you to grow and make mistakes like cypress trees and oak trees and some things where you need to kind of be on your game like uh, my Japanese black pines. And uh, to that end, it wasn't too long before I, um, I ordered 20 little Kodaheim maple trees. And uh, that is a, a Japanese, uh, a Japanese bonsai pot. So it's it's kind of a nice pot. And uh, that's my little forest. Um, ooh, I think probably when I did that, I had a lot to learn. So I didn't really build those in muck. I just kind of put their uh, substrate. I just kind of shoved it all together so that they wouldn't look like they were originally. Uh, little cubes which are what the seedlings coming out of they would come out of the little seed trays they were all little squares so if you kind of put those together is all of a sudden you have a little square lump that would make an orchard which is not at all what a forest would look like so without wanting to um, again the patience thing without wanting to wait till the right time of year I kind of wanted to combine a slip pot uh, method along with kind of mixing those up a little bit so I just kind of put three or four trees in, in in the palm of my hand and then cupped them and then just kind of pushed their little mounds of dirt around to where they looked a little bit more irregular and then placed them in there and then ran a wire along the front, kind of sewing it into the different root balls. And I did the same along the back and I pretty much just let the middle, I just pretty much let the middles go because they weren't going to have very far to go with everything anchored on the front and back. Uh, and then I covered the whole thing in moss and after that I started blasting the dirt out with uh, bad watering techniques but but it looks very natural and of course I could do stuff to fix that but I kind of like the way everything's going um, when it comes time to repot I look forward to repotting it and taking a little bit of that off the bottom and sitting it a little further down further down in the pot um, I've even thought about trimming a little off of this end and then maybe making a path in the middle, like cut it in the middle and uh, separating the two lumps of trees to maybe make a path through one side or the other. Uh, those are just kind of ideas I've had, but I pretty much like the idea of that, uh, of that forest hanging out in that pot. And I like the way that it's got, it's a little moundy and it looks a little, um, a little rugged um, you know it's not just like a flat forest it's maybe the side of a hill or the little top or the little bit of a rolling hill out in the woods or something I kind of think that's okay and so I'm pretty okay with the way that's going uh, since then I have accumulated uh, a few um, a few Yamadori trees this one is a uh, Yamadori ponderosa it is about 25 years old. 
and uh, it, it came with another tree. This one is also a ponderosa. It's 175 years old. They both came from Deadwood, South Dakota, and I, I got those this year. This is a part of this year's within the last uh, 12 months ac accusations, uh, acquisitions, I should say, uh, would be the two uh, ponderosas. And uh, my, uh, my little oak tree, this little oak. Oh, and also I did uh, this little bougainvillea was one that was in a planter and it was about four foot tall and I cut it down to a few inches. And every time I bring it indoors, I understand that if you bring them inside so that they can uh, better stand the winter, that they get, they grow longer, which is what I think happened. This thing has gotten quite a bit longer, even though it's restricted to the smaller pot. Uh, but I look forward to doing another little chop back on it, but I'm kind of happy to see that I got away with um, putting that uh, bougainvillea in that small little crackly um, uh, Japanese pot. And I'm also pretty happy that uh, I was able to collect um, or prop lift this little oak tree from the yard. It came uh, from the backyard where I walk Frida, they come up in the little iris beds. And uh, so I plucked that guy. I put it in that pot because uh, I got a lot of roots with it. And they were kind of sprawled out all over the place. At some point, I could probably stand to cut them back a little more. But I just really wanted, I just really wanted to get that little tree um, in a pot and get it going and see while, while the getting was good and before somebody came along and shaved it with the hood lacquer. This is my other little... Uh, bald cypress, it's a twin trunk, and as you can see, I've got them both coming up and doing a simple little, little curve. They're both starting to bud out at the top and along the trunk. Good to see all the colors and good to see all the shoots. So, um, we have some more projects coming up. As you've been able to follow here in the last in the last couple of weeks, there's some more wisterias I have. I also got another running wisterias down there you can't even hardly see. Um, you might have, as you will have noticed on the last couple of videos, uh, well, starting about three weeks ago, I started collecting uh, small little cuttings from the uh, from a from a uh, silver bark cherry tree, which is on on the grounds and uh, I have some here in my little in my little dairy gold one quart milk container this stays moist I've got like maybe one hole in the bottom but most of the drainage holes are in the side so that it will always slowly be reluctant to completely ever drain and as far as that goes it's in this little tray so I'm sure the bottom pretty well stays moist and I missed it from the top down and then make sure that there's some uh, moisture in there. This is the top that I cut off the bougainvillea. I don't know that if it's it's going to root or not. It was a hell of a chop and not really. It was a little cold to be doing that when you're going to do some kind of hellacious chop on a bougainvillea. They actually like, you can get away with that in like the middle of the summer when it's when it's blazing hot, just like the wrong time to do that for almost anything else is the right time for a bougainvillea. So I just looked at that and went, wow, that would have been something cool. So I scooped up um, what I uh, laughingly call the little blue pot of death because my first couple of yard of dories uh, that went into that didn't make it. I think so far I've seen um, two oaks and a maple in a yard maple and not make it in that. Maybe two oaks and two maples, I'm not sure now. Anyway, uh, one of these days, that little blue pot and I are gonna hit it, are gonna hit it big with a combination. What is that? That's not a crack, is it? Are gonna hit it big with a combination that actually works for us. And no, I don't think that's a crack. And this is the other little uh, run. Well, this is the second run of uh, cuttings I have from the, uh, from the cherry tree and uh this being the third 
and um, I have an idea since these guys sometimes you get a really pretty cherry tree when you see one that's you know got some uh, they their their uh, trunks can get their barks on the trunks can look really nice and aged and stuff but a lot of times a lot of times um, you what you see in cherry trees is people who have pretty okay trees until they bloom and then you go, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And then you wait for next year for it to bloom again. But I was actually thinking that if I took a, a little group, if I could get those little guys to root and I were to take them all the same way or to lean them all one direction, like it's a windswept field and everything that grows just kind of kind of has this one lean to it, right? So, um, uh, I, I think that even the little plain trees and stuff, being all twiggy and stuff for the first couple of years, they might be really pretty if they were um, if they were cherry trees and they had that little leafless little blooms about them. I just thought that would be a nice look. Maybe if it was uh, white, they would almost look like they were snow or something. And that's kind of one look but the other look is just pink that's just absolutely stunning and that is actually kind of why i bought that pot but then when it came time to need a pot i i grabbed it um thinking that i would probably leave this in here for a year or so and then do another root prune and then maybe next year i would have found the proper little uh the proper little cherry trees and then i'm like oh no there's a, a proper little cherry tree right there, and all I have to do is see if I can um, experiment with some cuttings. I'm going to experiment more with cuttings this year, and to that point, I have already started trying to increase my bonsai education on how to propagate, better propagate cuttings. I used to do that with, uh, with uh, the perennials and uh, I was pretty fair at it. I was, I actually had a pretty good clone game going too. My percentage was pretty high. But here as of late, uh, I haven't been having the most luck getting stuff to sprout. I mean, to that end, I knew I was in trouble with the oak trees whenever I did, the, uh, collected some brand spanking new. I mean, they were on the sidewalk. It was a, it was a cool day. They were underneath an oak tree. They were green. You could tell that anything that had been on, sitting on that sidewalk for over 20 minutes had already been stepped on and flat. And so I got the ones that had no little dots on them for where the little worms get them or nothing. So I collected about a dozen of them. And out of the dozen, 100% of them failed the float test. So when I tried to uh, germinate those, I'm like, I think it's odd that 100% of freshly fairly freshly and then put in the refrigerator and then, uh, you know, soaks the way you're supposed to. Oak trees filled the float test, but um, true to form after that, they didn't sprout. So I don't know whether or not it was an off year for that tree for those seeds or whether or not they had been sprayed and I didn't know it or... Anyway, I'm not really used to that kind of uh, bad ratio was something that normally comes up volunteer a little better than what I was seeing. So we haven't had the best luck with uh, collecting acorns. Um, and normally, uh, I mean, normally I've had luck with things like that before, just actually putting them in, putting them in little drinking cups with soil on them and then water them. I wouldn't even go to the trouble of doing the refrigerator, but I actually went through all of this went through the whole setup this time and uh, I don't know we'll try again on the oak trees because I would like to start a, um, I would like to start about a half a dozen little oaks and uh, so I was going to mention um, I, when I was watching people propagate their uh, their cuttings here recently one thing I saw was somebody had taken a bin a plastic bin like the ones you see there it was like one, it's actually two stuck together. And they had taken one and they put a layer of soil down on the bottom and they filled it full of cuttings. And I think they were all the same cuttings. That might have been when I was watching cherry trees. And then they put the lid on it, scratch that, 
they poured water in the bottom of it and I believe the bins they had had perforated or kind of ruffled bottoms. The bottom of the bin actually made a foot shape so that if they were to fill that with soil and then pour some water in it, the water would fall down into the soil and then fill up those little channels in the bottom that would make little runners or feet, whatever it is I'm, what I'm calling feet. And uh, so with that much water in it, they then applied the top and taped it up, sealed it up. I don't know how the plants were expected to start uh, and then continue to take in CO2 after they, you know, seemingly to me, and they said they kept it sealed up for six weeks. The plants or the cuttings would uh, then uh, take in the water that was in those little channels and bring it, breathe it out or whatever. But then once they breathed out that same moisture through their leaves, it would then hit the top of the little plastic bin that was taped up and then drop back down onto the uh, substrate and then make its way back. So they didn't need to open it up for water. I just don't understand why, uh, how they kept them happy CO2 wise. But anyway, I was enthralled by that. And uh, to that end, I'm going to use those two uh, plastic bottoms. One will be a top that I'll use for a lid. And I will throw some of my leftover, some of my leftover soil. By leftover, I don't mean that fresh stuff in the bag or the half a bag that I have here in my basket. But I do mean my um, repotting bed always has a layer of, of used akadama in the bottom of it. And I'll probably throw um, a good little inch or two in that. And we're going to get, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get more serious about cuttings. Um, and to that end, we could even incorporate that into our next project. Remember earlier when I was showing off those fluorescent lights that we still have left over? That whole area there, that entire area there in my kitchen where that cast iron urn is, that could be uh, the equivalent of a couple of flats of anything. That could be, that could literally be anything. And that could also be our next project. I'm kind of thinking that way. I've got the lights for it. I've got the rig for it. I've got the little bins. I had been thinking that uh, working at a hardware store, I didn't need to go uh, blowing money on stuff right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get ahead for a minute. Uh, I'm trying to get a little tree money going. But I was thinking, you know, people return crap all the time and start making yourself a, um, a wish list of little odds in the end that you would typically waste money on. And when they come up in returns, you can, you can probably get them cheap that way. So I thought, yeah, okay, we'll keep our eye out for uh, plastic bins. And uh, those plastic bins um, came from our dumpster um, because Pat and Frida were out walking, feeding the crows yesterday after work and uh, they were, because I'd put it in my mind that I needed uh, some plastic bins or a plastic bin and a lid, uh, I put it in my mind that that was on my need list that they uh, showed up at the dumpster. And I kind of put it that way because uh, the last thing I am is a holy person. But this apartment has a funny knack for uh, coming up with stuff that I'm thinking about. And, uh, you know, when it comes to being, I used to be like in the, my family was second generation antique dealers. So I would like dive down to the bottom of a dumpster in a heartbeat. Uh, that never was, you know, that's where the good stuff is. So I don't have, you know, whenever it comes to asking the universe for stuff, whenever uh, it shows up at the dumpster, I go, oh yeah, thank you. You know, uh, and that's just, so that's going to be something, uh, aside for the little, I know I'm going on about the free, um, I'm going on about the free plastic bins, but I just think it's neat the way the universe works. The other stuff I, uh, we already have on the standby, I already have uh, enough material to uh, 
mount a light above, uh, probably above, like where that you can see that clock hanging. I could probably mount a light at that level with without any trouble, and we could even do it neat. And then underneath that could be either uh, flats or those things. And those things could also just as easily be there and uh, with plants uh, getting started. And then I could have uh, that area just like described. Um, and also I had an idea about making that be uh, my bonsai display area putting a uh, big white backdrop in there with uh, some type of mural and then lighting it and then using that area for a bonsai tree display. But there's no reason why it could not be both because uh, with this many trees, I probably, you can't leave trees in your house. You can put one on display uh, for an evening, you know, uh, if you have dinner guests or something like I have, like I have dinner guests, Frida will have dinner guests probably before I have dinner guests. But um, but aside from that, uh, that would uh, still leave a lot of times for uh, for that to be other stuff, and that could definitely be a place to start to start up in our propagation game. So let's see, what have we been doing the past year? What do we want to do next? What has been a great tree to grow for beginners? Oaks and cypress trees and dawn redwood. If you're new to bonsai, you can have impressive dawn redwoods and oak trees and uh, cypress trees. Also, you can have uh, pretty impressive I know mines are just sticks. I love them even though they're just sticks, but you could also go out into your grandmother's yard or your grandfather's old back pasture and uh, dig up that wisteria stump and do something spectacular with that. Those make very, very easy, spectacular, beautiful bonsais, especially if they bloom, and especially if they bloom. Uh, forest, as I've said time and again, is a great way to take so-so trees and make a beautiful setting that just everybody uh, tends to go on and on about. Um, I look forward to these guys actually making more branches and limbs. My um, my complaint with the Kodaheim, uh, with the Kodaheim maples is their little leaves tend to stay really, 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 really close to the main to the main trunk and it's kind of you know it's a look but I would rather them look a little bit more maple like than um, somebody said palm trees which I totally get every time I look at it I think well those look like tie sticks or something like a, I don't know that wasn't that wasn't you know I'm not and that's not ugly but that wasn't what I was shooting for I do like the way they're splayed out and that probably doesn't help that um, but what will help is when we have more limbs and we can actually look through those leaves and see the trees. But we've got to, uh, we need to work this year on that. That's something else we need to work on. Um, making sure that all the foliage on these little trees spend the whole year on the trees healthy and not getting anything weird and not having to uh, come from behind. That's how we... You know, because you can, you can see places in there where we're starting to get some limbs and branches and stuff. And we just to see, need to see more of that. You, it's really hard to cut back stuff to show the trunk when there's really nothing but leaves and trunk. Um, I could just make it little pom-poms and, and, and skips of pom-poms. But that's, um, that's the one thing about Kodaheim maples that takes a little bit. It might have been that starting with uh, older trees would have helped that also. So, uh, but it'll be fine. I think they still look good. I'm looking. F I'm looking forward to even better. I guess is what I'm saying. And um, so yeah, that's what we've got going on. We are project oriented. We are uh, 
learn as I learn. We are learn from my mistakes. I love, uh, personally, I love watching bonsai videos and uh, I love passing along the, um, the good information that I get with genuine enthusiasm. But um, I'm also not so uh, egomaniacal that uh, I'm going to hide my F ups. I have made some mistakes in the past year and uh, as much fun as that is not to do, it's not as much fun to show off where um, where you didn't know what you were doing or where you were careless or where you were stupid, or if, to put it bluntly. But you know what? Uh, I don't know that being quiet about that stuff and pretending that it didn't happen is going to help anybody. Maybe it would um, fool people into uh, thinking I'm at a level of a game that I'm not, but I'm here to learn. In fact, 20 years from now, I will still be here to learn. That's how it is. I've come to know about a few other things that I've always had that attitude. And um, that's what I enjoy. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. This summer and spring, uh, this spring and summer, we're going to embark on a few more projects and we're going to increase our growing space. And we are also going to uh, increase the number of trees that we have and uh, we're going to continue to do our DIY project and uh, like it or not I will probably continue to do the um, don't let this happen to you portion of uh, bonsai it's part of growing is is a part of learning and as I learn things uh, I'll pass them along but yeah I appreciate you and uh, Frida Reba Darcy appreciates you and uh, in the next year we will do uh, another 161 videos so uh, thank you all for watching